Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to discuss about one of the minor pathway of the carbohydrate metabolism, which is the uronic acid pathway. Remember that the uronic acid pathway is an alternative pathway for glucose, or we can say it is an alternative oxidative pathway for glucose. Generally, glucose enters into glycolysis right where it produces glucose 6-phosphate we know that is the first step right glucose gets converted to glucose 6-phosphate mediated by the enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase and the same glucose 6-phosphate enters into fructose 6-phosphate right and this fructose 6-phosphate gets converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate this is the normal glycolytic pathway. But whenever we need extra compounds which need to be synthesized, so majority of the compounds utilizes the glucose 6-phosphate as a source. That's the reason we are calling it as the alternative pathway, which means this uronic acid pathway utilizes the byproduct of the glycolysis, which is the glucose 6-phosphate. So, glucose 6-phosphate is the primary compound or the molecule for the uronic acid pathway. Okay, so what is the need of this uronic acid pathway? Why it is happening? Uronic acid pathway is mainly happening because of the synthesis of glucuronic acid or we can say glucuronoids, right? And in this particular pathway, there is no ATP which is formed. And the major site where this is happening, the site is very, very important. The site is liver. The major pathway, the uronic acid pathway mainly takes place in the liver and the organelle is the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. Right? So now let's enter into the main cycle over here. I told you that the first molecule is the glucose 6-phosphate, which is the byproduct of the glycolysis. And the glucose 6-phosphate in the first step gets converted to glucose 1-phosphate. So what is happening in this reaction? The phosphate is changing its position from the sixth carbon to the first carbon. Remember guys, in the entire biochemistry, wherever you see the shift of the phosphate from one carbon to the other carbon, the enzyme is called as mutase. So phosphoglucomutase is an enzyme which catalyzes the glucose 6-phosphate to produce glucose 1-phosphate. Now, this glucose 1-phosphate utilizes uridine triphosphate here. You are seeing here, right? Uridine triphosphate. So what I'll write is this is the uridine and I'll write three phosphates. Uridine triphosphate. So this glucose 1-phosphate forms UDP glucose. So what is happening over here? Okay, let me explain you in this detail over here. We have glucose 1-phosphate, right? Glucose 1-phosphate. And from the uridine triphosphate, let's remove two phosphates here. You can see here PPI is removed. PPI is nothing but called as pyrophosphate. So, two inorganic phosphates are removed. So, now you have one uridine phosphate or we can say uridine monophosphate. Yes. Now, this uridine monophosphate is attached to glucose 1-phosphate. So, whenever uridine monophosphate attached to glucose 1-phosphate, can we say that it becomes uridine diphosphate plus glucose? Yes, it is. So, that is what is the compound which is produced called as uridine diphosphate glucose known as UDP glucose by removing PPI which is pyrophosphate in the reaction. So, the enzyme which is mediating this is the UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. The name itself it is saying that pyrophosphate is removed pyrophosphorylase to produce UDP glucose. Now, UDP glucose has been produced. Now, this is the very, very important step. 
the UDP glucose gets converted to UDP glucuronate. UDP glucose gets converted to UDP glucuronate. In this process, 2 NAD plus gets converted to NADH and H plus or NADH has been produced, we can say. And enzyme is UDP glucose dehydrogenase. But more than the enzyme, the product which is produced, UDP glucuronate is very, very important because so whatever the UDP glucuronate so produced in this reaction, it is diverted into the synthesis of glucuronides. Glucuronides. Okay. As well as it is also important for the synthesis of GACs. That is glycosaminoglycans as well as proteoglycans. Proteoglycans. So UDP glucuronate is used for the synthesis of glucuronides glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans. So tell me where these glucuronides are required. If you remember the conjugation of bilirubin in the bilirubin metabolism, whenever the bilirubin is conjugated, it produces bilirubin diglucuronide, right? Which means it is used in phase 2 conjugation reaction. That is the um, conjugation of the bilirubin to form bilirubin diglucuronide. So for the production of bilirubin diglucuronide in the liver, we need glucuronides and these glucuronides are coming from this uronic acid pathway only. Not only that, the important glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans are also uh, synthesized or utilizes the UDP glucuronate. Got it? So this is the very, very important step guide. That's the reason uronic acid pathway is important for the synthesis of glucuronides. Okay, now. Continuing the cycle, once the UDP glucuronate is produced, glucuronidase is an enzyme here. You can see glucuronidase is an enzyme. So it produces D glucuronate. And the same D glucuronate may also be diverted towards the synthesis of glucuronides. Not only the UDP glucuronate, D glucuronate is also responsible for the synthesis of glucuronides. Now, from D glucuronate, Immediately, L-gulonate is produced, okay, and uh, the enzyme is not uh, that important here, and in this process, NADPH is utilized, but not the NADH. Always remember that wherever the NADPH is utilized, it is the anabolic pathway. Always in the biochemistry, NADPH is utilized in the anabolic pathway, and whenever in the cycle, instead of the NADPH is utilized, if NADH is utilized, then it is most commonly it is considered as a catabolic pathway, right? So NADPH is used majority of the anabolic reactions in our body. Okay, L-gulonate is produced. <clears throat> now, L-gulonate gets converted to L-gulonolactone. There are two pathways here and L-gulonolactone gets converted finally to L-ascorbic acid and mediated by the enzyme, very important enzyme, L-gulonolactone oxidase. But remember guys, this L-gulonolactone oxidase is not present in the human beings. Therefore, L-gulonate cannot be converted into ascorbic acid in humans as well as higher primates, but it can be synthesized in the rodents and all, okay? Lower animals, but not in the higher primates as well as the mammals, mainly because of the absence of the enzyme l gulonolactone oxidase. Therefore, we do not synthesize vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid in our body. Rather, we have to take in the form of diet. So, let us forget about this step because it is not important for the humans. Now, the most important step is this L-gulonate gets converted to 3-keto L-gulonate. No need to remember this step. Okay, the final, the most important step in the uronic acid pathway is this one. Why? Because this 3-keto L-gulonate produces L-xylulose. We know that uh, the xylulose is a pentose, which is keto, so which is a keto pentose. So L xylulose gets converted to D xylulose. See here, L xylulose 
gets converted to D-xylulose. There is only like d andal optical isomers, these two are. But the intermediate product which is produced is called as xylitol. Intermediate product which is produced is called as xylitol. And this xylitol is produced by the enzyme called as xylitol dehydrogenase. Remember the product which is produced is called as xylitol dehydrogenase. Very, very, very important. So whenever this xylitol dehydrogenase is absent, the condition what we can see here, remember the condition what we can see here is called as essential pentose urea. Essential pentose urea. So why we are calling it as essential pentose urea? Because mainly remember that the pentoses. So what is xylulose here? Xylulose is the pentose. And this pentose is very much important for the production of xylulose 5-phosphate. The final product of the uronic acid pathway is the xylulose 5-phosphate. And we know that the xylulose 5-phosphate is responsible for the hexose monophosphate shunt. Very important for the HMP pathway. We know what is the function of HMP pathway. HMP pathway is also responsible for the synthesis of pentoses. These pentoses are used for the synthesis of DNA and RNA, right? So very, very important metabolic pathway here. So xylulose 5-phosphate, which is the product of the uronic acid pathway, is given to the HMP pathway for the synthesis of important uh, riboses for the DNA as well as RNA. It contributes pentoses to the HMP pathway, we can say. Therefore, these essential pentoses cannot be donated to the HMP pathway. Rather, this L-xylulose will be excreted in the urine. Will be excreted in the urine because of the deficiency of the enzyme xylitol dehydrogenase. Remember, this is a benign condition. <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you remember, one of the important point, uh, let me write about uh, the Garrett's tetrad. Okay, Garrett's tetrad. So what are the four components of the Garrett's tetrad, guys? We have the pentose urea. Huh? We have the pentose urea. And we have the albinism. And uh, we have the cysteine urea. Right? And we have the alcaptinuria. Alcaptinuria. So this is the Garrett's tetrad, and one of the important component is the pentose urea. And this essential pentose urea is mainly because of the deficiency of the enzyme called as xylitol dehydrogenase. And in this particular process, in this essential pentose urea, remember that L xylulose is excreted in the urine. And uh, remember, in this particular condition, the Benedict test will be positive. You know, for what the Benedict test is actually test is actually performed to detect uh, the reducing sugars in the urine. And also the Bial's test is positive. Remember these two uh, important points here. So this is the essential pentose urea. And if you remember, we have another condition called as elementary pentose urea. Let me write over here, right? Elementary pentose urea. So tell me what is the difference between this essential pentose urea as well as the elementary pentose urea? What is the difference over here? So remember guys, so elementary pentose urea is a type of pentose urea mainly occurs whenever we are consuming large amounts of fruits like pears which are rich in pentoses, right? But what is the difference between essential pentose urea? So essential pentose urea is because of the deficiency of an enzyme. But elementary pentose urea is not related to an enzyme deficiency, but it occurs mainly due to dietary intake of pentoses. So increased dietary intake of pentoses. 
but not due to the enzyme deficiency called as elementary pentose urea. So this is what we need to know the difference between the essential pentose urea as well as the elementary pentose urea. And essential pentose urea is due to the deficiency of the enzyme called as xylitol dehydrogenase where L-xylulose is excreted in the urine. And if you see what is the overall fate of this uronic acid pathways, Uronic acid pathway is responsible for the synthesis of the glucuronides, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans and also it contributes the essential pentoses toward the hexose monophosphate shunt uh, where the important enzyme is the xylitol dehydrogenase and this uronic acid pathway mainly takes place the important site where it is in the liver and the cell organelle which is the cytoplasm and it is the minor pathway of the carbohydrate metabolism, one of the bypass pathway of the oxidative pathway of glucose, right? So by this, we have completed the importance of the uronic acid pathway.